Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Chris with CNM Aquatics. If you're new here, we talk about pretty much anything that's related, anything has to do with the saltwater reef keeping hobby. And today, I was gonna talk a little bit about hydrogen peroxide and what I'm gonna do with it. So I've got a lot of bubble algae and a lot of this red kind of hair algae on on a lot of my rocks in my soft coral attachment tank and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do to get rid of that because I've been just picking it off the rocks for like the last month and it, and it grows back like crazy and, and it's getting on frags so it just it has to go so what we got here is just regular over-the-counter hydrogen peroxide and you can get this pretty much anywhere, um, grocery stores, Walmart, Walgreens, they all sell it over the counter. And what we're using here is 3% hydrogen peroxide. And that's what you mainly find in the stores. Um, they do have one, 2%, all the way up to 90% hydrogen peroxide. That's the real strong stuff. But this is the 3% hydrogen peroxide and it's fairly cheap and it actually has a lot of practical applications for the hobby as far as trying to clean stuff and get rid of algae. Um, it, it works really good for you know cleaning out tubing if you want to soak sponges in it there's there's proper ways to do it but today what we're going to do is take the live rock out of the aquariums and we're going to scrub it and we're going to soak it in water and hydrogen peroxide to get rid of that algae that I can't keep off the rocks. Just keep in mind that the hydrogen peroxide, it kills all the bad bacteria and the algae you don't want, but it also kills all the good stuff too. So I went through and I picked the corals off the rocks that I didn't want to put in this and I'm going to get all my snails and hermit crabs and anything I don't want to die, I'm going to get off the rocks before I put it into the solution. And keep in mind that hydrogen peroxide is somewhat caustic, so I will be using gloves because it can irritate your skin and, and burn your skin, prolonged use. So I'll show you some shots of the rocks in the aquarium that we're gonna clean and show you how I'm gonna do it. And then I will show you shots of the same rocks after the process is done. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first I figured I'd show you guys kind of what I'm trying to get rid of here. And you can see all along the, the gravel bed and on the rocks, on the live rock here, this, it's basically like a red hair algae. Um, it's actually a, a type of macro algae that can be beneficial to your aquarium, you know, if it's kept in a sump, just like chato, things like that. So it'll try to outcompete the other algaes in the system. But as you can see, this stuff is just taking hold on the substrate and the live rock. And I have picked it off multiple times and it just keeps coming back. And I cannot get it all off the rock. I, I've tried tweezers and pulling it off and, you know, a toothbrush and all that. And I just can't get rid of it. I, there's always a little piece left behind and it comes back. And it's not the fastest growing algae. I, I'd say it's like a medium growth rate. But... If you break a piece off and it lands on the rocks or any other place in the aquarium that it attaches to, it's going to start growing again. And if, if left unchecked, it just gets completely out of control. So we're going to try to use the hydrogen peroxide to take care of that. And this is the sump to that aquarium. And I'm showing this here. We're going to pull this piece of live rock out and it is just full of bubble algae. It's gotten out of control there. So we're going to see how the hydrogen peroxide does on the bubble algae as well as the, the red hair algae. And this aquarium, this is just a small 20 gallon aquarium. And what I do with this one is it, it's a low flow aquarium. So there's no power heads or anything, just throw the, um, the return pump and the drain. And what I use it for is for attaching soft corals. I'll throw them in there and let them attach to the substrate on the bottom before I glue them to a frag plug. And it has worked out great 
it is an attaching tank like this but the downside with the low flow and the light is algae growth with very low flow the, the algae really attaches and grows in this aquarium so we're, we're trying to take care of it here and I'm going to try to siphon up what I can off the substrate and as you'll see here it doesn't work very well it starts to suck up the hair algae the red hair algae and then it's attached to little pieces of rubble and it falls right back out of the siphon tube so I thought this was gonna work and make my job a lot easier by just sucking it up but that wasn't the case I'm going to have to go through and just pick out as much as I can by hand because I'm not treating the actual aquarium with the hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to pull it out and put it in buckets and just treat the rocks. I don't want to treat the entire system because this system actually goes through the wall and is attached to another aquarium where I'm growing sun corals. There's no light on it and I'm just growing, it's like my sun coral propagation tank on the other side. So I don't want to dump it full of hydrogen peroxide. So you'll see, I just got to do it the hard way and pull out as much as I can. And I know I'm not going to get it all, but I'm going to get as much as I can. And the little pieces of the, that grow back, I'm going to stay on top of it and pull those out as I notice them. So after I get as much as I can, I'm going to go ahead and, and drain the water level down to as far as I can. While I'm doing it, I might as well get any sediment or substrate out. Because this aquarium, I don't, I, like I said, I don't use it to actually grow the corals out. It's just an attachment tank. So it doesn't get fed a lot. So there's not a lot of nutrients going into the system. And on the other side, I don't clean it out nearly as often as um, the other grow out systems and freight systems. It, it doesn't, it doesn't need it. But while I'm doing this, I may as well get what I can and I'm not worried about taking out too much nutrients because like I said, I'm not growing corals out here. I'm just throwing them in there for a couple days, a couple weeks, depending on the species and attaching them. And I'm not sure if you guys have dealt with this issue before, you know, like hair algae on the substrate, things like that. If you have a solution, some type of tool or technique used to get that off, and I know this aquarium was pretty much covered on the substrate. If, if there's a certain type of powered vacuum or, or something you know about that I don't, let me know in the comments because I'd be interested to look into it. Um, in a lot of the other systems, the grow out systems and the frag systems, I try to use herbivores as much as possible to try to keep the different types, types of algae in, in check. And we had another video, a short video on that, that I did. I, I like to use natural remedies whenever possible and, and I try to stay away from, from chemicals. I, I just feel like, you know natural predators are the best way to keep the algae in check and just because you have algae in your aquarium doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something wrong now if you have an explosive you know algae bloom um, you've probably got you know too intense lighting or your nutrients are too high or a combination of both but every aquarium has algae in it whether you, you see it or not it, it's a natural thing a natural process and you're gonna have algae. There's a lot of aquariums online you see that just look absolutely pristine and perfect and that's great but if, if they're a healthy reef ecosystem there's gonna be algae in there somewhere. It's just part of the game. The, the main thing is to stay on top of it and, and keep it in check. Not let it get out of hand like, like this aquarium was. So I've got my live rock that I'm going to be treating in some five gallon buckets and 
we're finishing up draining the rest of the water out here we're not gonna get all of it we'll get I'll get most of it I'm not too worried about getting all of it and we'll take them back and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna go about treating the rocks with the hydrogen peroxide So in the first bucket here, I've got RODI water in it already, and I'm going to put all the rocks that I'm going to be treating, this is the one with all the bubble algae on it, into the RODI water, and, and I hate bubble algae, it drives me nuts. So I'm going to have one bucket with RODI water where we're going to put all the rocks in and we're going to treat it. And then there's a second bucket of RODI water afterwards that we're going to use to dunk the rocks in and clean off any, any peroxide that we can. I didn't really touch on it on this video. There are, if, if you don't... Because keep in mind, I'm, I'm dosing a lot of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dose pretty much this whole bottle of peroxide just because I'm killing everything on this live rock. And I'm just starting over with it. Um, I'm using a lot here and, and like I said, I'm wiping the whole rock out and I'm starting over. So if you have any corals or any anything on this rock that you don't want to die, don't treat it like this or pick it off. There were some mushrooms and zinnias on these rocks and I, I took them off ahead of time because I didn't want to kill them. But my goal here is to just pretty much nuke the rocks completely and start over fresh. So I dumped in my peroxide and there's some elbow grease here. I'm going to scrub off whatever algae that I can. And wear gloves guys when you do this with the peroxide. It is a like a corrosive chemical um, and it can hurt your skin with prolonged exposure so just wear gloves so I'll take a toothbrush and I will scrub off whatever I can see and you're not going to get all of it there's just stuff you're not going to see that's what the peroxide's for if you let the I didn't hear but if you let the rocks soak for a little bit maybe I don't know 40 minutes to an hour in the peroxide before you scrub it the algae comes off a lot easier if you let it soak for a period of time before you start scrubbing. But this started to come off fairly, fairly easy right off the bat. There's nothing, nothing really special to this. It's just a little elbow grease. You gotta scrape off what you can. But I was talking a little bit about before, there's there's other videos out there and techniques on doing like spot treatments with, you know, the peroxide. Say there's just a little patch of algae on the rock that you, you want to scrub off and get rid of. You can kind of treat it with a syringe with the peroxide and get it off that way without nuking the whole rock. Like I said, I'm, I'm just killing everything on this thing. And the peroxide it did very well look at this giant fire worm or bristle worm that's a pretty good size one and it this video was shot in real time so that they killed that thing that quick they, they do not like that okay so the rocks have been soaking for about an hour at this point. You can see the dead worms and the dead algae just floating on top of that water in that bucket. And it's done, it's done a pretty decent job on these rocks. So coming out of the peroxide bucket, it's going into the just straight RODI water. It's not salt water, it's just RODI water. And it, I, I don't know, my theory, I'm using 
RODI water and not tap water just so I don't absorb any you know metals or silicates or anything in the tap water into the rock when I put it back in the aquarium so I don't know how big of a deal it is honestly but it might be so I'm, I'm just going to use the RODI water I have and I don't have to worry about it so I don't want it to leach suck up a bunch of silicates and then be like a battery for you know algae growth again Okay, so we got the, the rocks rinsed. I let them soak in the RODI for a little bit, maybe 20 minutes or so, and dunked them and, and rinsed them out. And that was the bubble algae rock. And it did pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. And then this is the rock up top here. And you can see little red patches still. I couldn't scrub it all off. But the little red patches of the red hair algae over the next two days turned white died and fell off and there was nothing left on the rock whatsoever so just a simple video guys on how to use hydrogen peroxide to reset and kill algae on your live rock i appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions or comments please leave them below until next time thanks a lot bye